Hello everyone, this is Nathan here. So now in this video, I'd like to be discussing the second coming of Christ. Now, um, uh, this is a popular subject within Christendom, the idea that Jesus Christ will be returning, will be coming back, and will be coming back again. And it is very true. Now, so what is the second coming of Christ? Now, in this video, we will be distinguishing the second coming of Christ, of course, from other events such as the rapture of the church. And now, flip your Bibles right now. Let's go right now to uh, Revelation chapter uh, 19, in which the Bible talks about this in detail. In uh, verse 11, the Bible says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and name written that no man knew but he himself and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god so when the bible uses the capital w for the word of god it refers to of course the lord jesus christ and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean and out of his mouth go the sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So the Bible is very clear that <clears throat> the Bible is very clear that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ will be coming back to earth. Now, the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ was rather humble. He came um, he was riding on a donkey to Jerusalem. We know that. And he, uh, contrary to the expectations of uh, the Jews and as well as the his uh, his uh, his disciples, the apostles, he did not initiate a political revolution to overthrow to overthrow Rome. Now, but this the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ will indeed be very different. He will indeed be coming to set up his kingdom, an earthly kingdom, and he will indeed overthrow the global government of the antichrist now if we read in verse 19 and 20 and i saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that brought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mock of the beast and then that worshiped his image these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone so now um so of course uh so we understand that um, uh, the second coming of Christ is when the Lord Jesus Christ will be returning, will be returning, okay, will be returning to the earth and with his saints, with his saints, of course, uh, with his armies, uh, with his saints, uh, and he will smite the nations and shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he will indeed be destroying killing off the army of the antichrist as well as the armies of the kings of this earth right the beast right the kings of the earth they will try their best to fight against the lord jesus christ of course they will fail okay and the beast and the false prophet will be thrown into the lake of fire to be tormented forever and ever okay so this my friends is what we call the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is drastically different from his first coming. The first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, he he simply died on the cross. He was um, executed by the authorities. He was um, nailed to the cross um, at the behest of the Jews and by Roman soldiers, of course. Uh, and contrary to what people expected, he did not initiate a political revolution to overthrow Rome. The second coming will be very different. He will be coming as the king of kings to indeed rule this world. Right, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, to rule this world, and he will destroy the existing political system of the Antichrist. So, when will the second coming of Christ happen in biblical timeline? Now, keep in mind, though, the second coming of Christ will occur after the seven year tribulation. Now, and as I've discussed in other videos, let's just go over, go over this again, right? We're now in Revelation chapter 11, right? Verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand. 203 square days closed in sackcloth so for 1203 square days or 1260 days there will be two witnesses on the earth who will be prophesying so 
if you do the math, this adds up to a total of three years and a half, right? Or 42 months. And as I've discussed in other videos, uh, these two witnesses are Moses and Elijah. And now, uh, what is the second half of the tribulation? The second half, of course, uh, is the reign of the beast, right? The Antichrist. Now, if we were looking at Revelation chapter 13, right? We go into verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. The Antichrist is, of course, known as the beast, right? The beast, right? And who gives him this power? The dragon, Satan, right? And this will be... Indeed, a global government, right? A global government, a totalitarian regime that uh, hates God, you know, and um, all those that dwell upon the earth will worship him, okay? That's what the Bible says. And of course, um, of course, this beast will be making uh, great wonders, doing great miracles, right? And um, though anyone who refuses to worship the beast will be killed and then if you if you refuse the mark of the beast, you will not be able to participate in the economy. And with that said, you cannot take the mark of the beast today. Okay, we're not living in the tribulation. Okay, we're not living in the second half of the tribulation. We're not even living the tribulation. Oh, we're living the church age. So, of course, the be the number of the beast is called six hundred three hundred six or six hundred sixty six in our modern language. And so, um, the Bible also promises that. Uh, promises eternal damnation and hell for those from the lake of fire for those who worship the beast right and if we go to revelation chapter 14 and the bible says and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name so the bible is very clear that those who worship the beast right who receiveth the mark of his name they will be tormented in hell in the lake of fire forever and ever in the presence of the holy angels in the presence of the lamb right and now in Revelation chapter 16, the Bible talks about the judgments of the seven vials, right? The seven vials, um, you know, will, will, it will be judgment unto those, um, unto those, you know, who will worship, who worship the beast, right? And the verse two says, and the first one had poured out his vial upon the earth and there fought noisome and a grievous, grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worship his image. So this is God's judgment on the earth for having worshipped the beast, right? For having worshipped the beast. And um, of course, uh, now we read here in verses 8 and 9, the fourth angel poured, poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire and men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues and they repented not to give him glory. So now a lot of people will say, well, why does God throw people in hell forever? Now look here, even when God torments people with such awful pain right such in such an awful way they still don't repent they still don't trust christ right same thing right here and the lord you know promises horrifying you know judgments you know ju horrifying judgments upon the face of the this earth you know for those who worship the beast right yes and um and then um in luke in verse 21 it says and there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven every stone of about the weight of a talent, and men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. The Bible is very clear that that tor the torment will be terrible, and despite this, men will still blaspheme God. Think about that. So, in conclusion, we can now well, we can we can safely we can now we read a little bit of context. We understand that in biblical timeline, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ occurs after, right after. After after the seven year tribulation, of course, um, in uh, Revelation chapters seventeen and eighteen, we read about Mystery Babylon, right? Who this will be the global government responsible for the persecution of the saints, right? It says in verse six, and I saw the women drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. The Bible is very clear that there will be a global government in the end times, right? There will be ten with ten kings, and these these ten kings will be supporting the beast, and they will make war with the Lamb, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ. But they will ultimately lose, right? Yes. So, um, so, yes. And now we go to chapter chapter number eighteen, right? We see that, of course, the uh, the Lord, you know, that Babylon will ultimately be destroyed, right? The Babylon will, the Bible prophesies the destruction of Babylon, right? And so 
in this context, if we go back down to chapter 19, we see that the second coming of Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ coming down from heaven with his army, with his people to destroy the nations, to, to, to overthrow the Lord Jesus Christ will this time will be overthrowing the reign of the Antichrist with his army, you know, with his army, and he will be reigning the nations with a rod of iron. And of course, if we read the following chapter, you know, chapter 20, we read that in the following chapter, the Lord Jesus Christ will reign, rule and reign the earth for a thousand years, right? For a thousand years, the Bible for this is the cold, what we call the millennial reign, when the Lord Jesus Christ will be ruling the earth for a thousand years. So in proper context, we can understand that we can understand that that the in biblical timeline, right, in the biblical timeline chron chronology, the second coming of Christ will occur following the seven year tribulation, right, as we've just as we've just read and studied. And um, so um, I made another video talking about the seven thousand years of human history. You know, you can re watch it right now. Watch it when you if you want. And um so when will the second of coming of Christ take place? Based on biblical principles, so right now, um, if you do the math, you know, since Adam sinned, from the time Adam sinned, the year 33 to the year 6033 or 2033 AD, there will be, have been 6,000 years since Adam sinned. And mankind will have labored for 6,000 years to survive. And the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, that a thousand years is likened to a day with the Lord. Right. So figuratively speaking, by the year 2033 AD or 6033, mankind will have labored for six days. And the final 1000 years, the millennial reign, that represents rest for the earth. So there's good reason to believe that the second coming of Christ will take place in the year 2033 after, of course, a seven year tribulation from 2026 to 2033, of course. I hope this video was edifying. If you have any questions, please let me leave them in the comment section. And most importantly, if you don't want to be a part of the tribulation, please put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ today for salvation. Trust in him alone. And uh, once you're saved, you're always saved. And saved Christians in this age will not have to worry about going through the tribulation or facing the mark of the beast because we will be raptured out beforehand, as I've discussed already in other videos. Thank you. And God bless.